You're going to share your questions. You're going to figure out who goes first in your group. Um, my question on this question is, how would you solve 4x squared plus 81 equals 36x by using two methods and would the, same, would the solution come out the same? My point of confusion was, using the knowledge you have about questions, how can you classify the max or minimum, the range, and domain? My point of confusion was, after dividing the 3 by the entire equation to leave x squared alone, what process must be achieved in order to solve this equation by completing the square? My point of confusion was, after doing the discriminant, how do you describe the number and the types of roots and the solutions of, by using a quadratic formula? My point of confusion was, by using your prior knowledge on completing the square, how would you transform the equation into vertex form, and what is the process for finding the points? Okay, so now that we have read all of our point of confusion, who needs the most help from the group? Well, I do. Jenny? Okay. Okay, so Jenny, can you please identify uh, your point of confusion from this question and give your 30 second speech? Okay, well, um, my question is by using your prior knowledge on completing the square, how would you transform the equation um, into vertex form and what is the process for finding the points? Um, I'm going to work out what I know. I know you're supposed to use um, completing the square to transform it into vertex form because you need it to be in vertex form to graph. And I know that the first step to graphing um, after you transform the equation is finding and plotting the vertex. But here's where I get lost in completing the square. And do you know how your yeah, final answer, the form, form is going to look uh, like? like the, the vertex form? Yeah. yeah. So then how will we do that? How will we simplify the form to whatever? Before, um, like, how would you simplify the form? This would be the equation that you use to um, so for the vertex form, form to find the answer to get the vertex. So you could plot on the graph. So in order to go to your vertex form equation, what is necessary in order to go? What like what steps do you need? To do? You need to complete the square, and I know that you have to use one of these numbers to um, fill in this, but I'm not sure how. Do you have to use some kind of formula? I think I remember it would be um, b over t negative b over two, and then we have to find b, and this would be b. Would you Are you sure it's negative b? Over Do you two? have it in your notes somewhere? Uh, I think so. What do you think? If you don't have it there, you can use the I'll use it. Function to y. Oh, it's it's actually b over two squared. It's not a negative. And then to, then I switch the y. So then I would fill in for b. And then twice I leave the y and I subtract the y. Okay, now that you have your one, where would you? use it in the, your equation? I would fill in the blanks. And then I multiply times 4 to, to make this equal to 1. What can you do 
request to you filled in the blanks? Um, I'm not sure. Can you cut your Is there anything you can okay. combine? Oh, yeah. Can you guys please check for a resume? I can combine my questions on And then my Are you sure you're doing your addition and subtraction correctly? Yeah, because I know that when you have a negative and a positive, like here negative 3 plus 1, the 2 would become negative because it's as if you're subtracting, and then the negative comes from the 3 because the greater number gives the symbol to the answer. Mm -hmm. And so now that you have your equation, do you know if you can factor anything? or? Well, I'm not sure, but it's almost looking like this. Why aren't you sure that you can factor out from the equation? What am I sure? Why, why aren't you sure that you can? Why aren't you? Yeah. Because, because, well, because <coughs> this is the, 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 the formula. Wait, that's how you know that's how you This is practically this. I just need to move the two over, right? What is your b squared over 2? What is that? Tell me. That would be um, to finish completing the score. Um, and what number did you fill in? What number did I fill in? Because you Correct. Yeah, the, I put that. Okay. And can you, and when you take your 2 squared over 2, uh -huh. are you following your order of operations? Yes, because you would divide the 2 over the 2 and then you square what you get. Do you know what your order of operations are? Yeah. Parentheses, exponent, multiplication, division, and addition and subtraction. So, are you following your order of operations? Let's see, how about you look in the book again to double check how the formula looks? It looks right. Are you sure? Are you You're not forgetting something? How would it be possible for the first thing for, in order of for it to be divided and be exponent at the same time? You would actually do that this way, and then you square it, and then you would get one. Good job. Mm -hmm. How can you factor the right side? This side? Yeah. By using the diamond method? Which is when you take um, the factories of this, which is a 1, 1 times 1, and you take the factories of the last number, which is also 1 times 1, and then you multiply them. And if they add up to this number, that means they're correct. Like when you do the diamond method. Can you explain that one more time for me, please? Mm -hmm. You take the factors of the first number, where the x squared is, and you put them on the ends of the x. And then you take the factors of the last number, and you do the same. Then you would multiply. You would get 1. You multiply the bottom numbers, you get 1. After you multiply, you add. And you should end up with the middle number if they're correct. And now that you've come to this, what um, step do you need to do in order to make it look like your written text form on the bottom? Well, the Y is alone here, so I would have to make this alone too. Wait, how did you get the um, the A? The A? Mm -hmm. Oh, the A would be a 1 because, as you notice here on the X squared, it doesn't have anything, but it's also a 1. So it's, sometimes it's just imaginary. Oh, okay.
And now that you got your equation in vertex form, how can you, what steps do you need to do in order to find your vertex? So, what do you have? The vertex here in this equation is so h and k, so then the h here is 1, and the k here is 2, so it would be 1 and 2. Okay, so if it's 2, um, are you sure that's your vertex? Wait. Um, well, here's a negative. I, I'm not sure if the signs have to do with anything, but our teacher showed us something like that's so if it's positive, always tell but when it's going to positive, I feel like it's so going to be the same. So, knowing that, um, when you're looking at your one in your equation, is it still going to be a one, a one in your vertex? I have actually figured out it'll be negative because okay. of the way. <laughs> <laughs> now that you have your vertex, what do you need to do with it? Yeah. Well, is there like any other points that you have to find? I know that first I have to plot it because it's the vertex and that's how you start the graph. I would just get stuck on how to find the x of the point. So from here, how would you find like other points on the graph? I know you only need two more and that you use a table, but I don't know how to fill in the table. The vertex would be your first point on the table, though. Do you know how to find the other axis? Not really. Like, I don't know which numbers to choose to fill in. If I could just choose any, or like. Fill. And do you know where and what equation you're gonna fill them in? This one because. I wouldn't have to start all the way over again. What numbers are closer to negative one? The closest, like around it, around it? Yeah. Zero and then negative two. Yeah. What would you do with those numbers since you know they're closer to negative one? You would graph it because it's closer and it makes it easier for you. But how would you graph it knowing that you don't have no y for it? I have to put a question. Have, like, very aha <laughs> so I already found this one and I know that our teacher mentioned that if whatever you get on this one if it's correct it should reflect on this side so I'm just going to check my work now so now I just have to graph That would be my. Vertex. What is that thing called? The, the this. Mm -hmm. It's um the parabola, and a parabola is a set of all points in a plane that are the same distance from a given point. So I already found my vertex and the points to graph. Now I just need to write my question. So one more questions. Can you guys ask her to check for understanding? Um, how do you know that your plot points are correct? What can you do to check your answer? Yeah. By filling it back into the plugging it back into the equation and seeing that they reflect, which a parabola should do, mm -hmm. reflect each point. So what, what equation would you plug it back into? The the one that I got after I factored the vertex form equation. Any more questions? Yeah. 
Okay. Okay, so can you please read your steps out loud? Step one, we used completing the square right here. That's how we got to this equation. And then, well, we filled in the blanks. Then we factored the right side of the equation to end up with y minus 2 equals x plus 1 squared. And then you distributed the 2 to the other side so it would look like the equation to, to graph. And then you found the vertex, which is h and k, the negative 1 and the 2. We found points near the vertex, which were 0 and negative 2. And then we plugged them into the equation that we created. And we graphed, we plugged them in there and found the points in graph. Okay. You guys satisfied that she understands what her point of confusion was? Yeah. All right, great. I need you guys to have a conversation about what you covered today. You're going to talk about the point of confusion and how you worked through it. Talk about what you learned. Who okay. wants to go first? Well, what I learned about the point of confusion was on the completing the square equation, the y, the b over 2 and square. I learned, I, I didn't know that you had to do that before completing the square, and now I do. Heidi? Well, I know you had to do that, but what I didn't understand was, um, like, what you do to one side, you do to the other. I didn't know that, but Oh, now like I the know. negative three? Yeah. The blank? Um, after she got her red text, I was confused about the table and what points she had to use, but then I figured out that she had to use the nearest numbers that are closest to the red text. Okay. Um, I was confused when, like, um, when she got the A for the equation on the bottom. To, yeah, Because there's an invisible one, right? <laughs> okay, so does anybody else need help that they want to go next? Matthew? Okay.